the um, aircraft that you see on the screen at the moment uh, means a fair bit to John Bailey, so he'll be talking about that aircraft today. I'm going to quote to you from a, uh, a paragraph from a book which is as yet unpublished. It refers to a person in Western Australia looking at an aeroplane. He had seen the aircraft type about two months earlier when Frank Stevens of the Vacuum Oil Company visited Maylands. The oil company was conducting a survey of the principal air routes and aerodromes of Australia so they could assess the prospects of fuel installations. Newspaper reports quoted that the company's Reliant, that's a Stimson Reliant, uh, was one of the most modern aircraft in Australia, having an array of flight instruments not seen before in WA. The well laid out instrument panel was designed for night flying and the arrival at Maylands was made by reference to a radio compass tuned to 6WF. It was the first time a radio compass had been used for a civil aircraft, for civil aircraft navigation in Western Australia. That aircraft is now in the possession of John Bailey's son. That's a report from a newspaper over 70 years ago. The aircraft arrived in Western Australia again a few years ago on a trailer coming from the Eastern States. Kevin Bailey uh, has spent many hours on it with his dad's help to restore it. Thanks Brian. Good afternoon everyone. I think I'm designated as John Bailey 1 and <coughs> the other John Bailey is John Bailey Mark 2 as he <laughs> pointed out to you. Um, it's interesting because my wife claims that she sees a um, a similarity with his nose. She said he's got the Bailey nose, so maybe there's a connection somewhere <laughs> along the line. <clears throat> Back to this aeroplane. It, um, it's been a particularly interesting thing to me because I remember seeing this very same aeroplane when it arrived here in 1936. I was a teenager and I looked at that and I thought, that is the most beautiful aeroplane I've ever seen. And I still think so. That, um, it has, uh, uh, it actually it's arrived here three times, uh, there was a, I've got a note of it somewhere. Um, in 1970, uh, Mr O'Sullivan of West Perth purchased the aircraft and um, it undertook a four years restoration and eventually in 1976 um, it went to the Joe Brage collection in uh, uh, Albury-Wodonga and later on it flew up to um, Wangaratta where, when they moved the uh, whole thing there. However, uh, just briefly, the, uh, when uh, Kevin acquired it from uh, when the, um, the Drage collection was uh, disbanded, um, we were going to fly it back actually, but um, on inspection the uh, fabric looked a little bit fragile and we thought, you know, mm, I don't think we'll fly that. So um, we took my um, Diesel Patrol and uh, a great big treble axle trailer. We left here about four o'clock one morning. Forty-eight hours later, exactly, we we're in Wangaratta, over four thousand k's away. Which uh, I tell you what was a fairly. <coughs> we, we just we had three drivers, Kevin and um, um, Mark Hanson and myself, and uh, we just drove non-stop, except for refueling and eating. And um, it took two and a half days to dismantle it and stow it on the trailer and then we set off coming back. Um, we came up, we had to cross the Murray River uh, up near Mildura because uh, uh, down at um, well, where that barge thing is, I've forgotten the name but now, but um, uh, it, it was a bit too dangerous to try and get across there with this great big trailer. <coughs> we thought we might damage the aeroplane. So um, we crossed the river into New South Wales we're travelling uh, a lot of it at night, night and day. Um, we got back to uh, South Australia, um, crossed South Australia in daytime, well, a lot, a lot of it at night time in very, very strong windy conditions. At one stage I drove for three hours with my foot flat on the floor and I was in third gear and just managing to battle along because it's a big aeroplane to, uh, uh, and the wind resistance was pretty bad. But. Um, by um, that night we were across in um, Yuna, went out to Nundru and uh, refuelled and set out again. And um, out near uh, 
Yalata, the cops got us for driving at night time with a, an over, oversized load. We had all the requisite gear, the uh, flashing lights and the red flags and God knows what, but uh, apparently it's legal to, to uh, travel with oversized, overweight things in, um, in Victoria, but not in South Australia or Western Australia, which we learned to our cost, and it was a fairly considerable cost too. They, it's, they find us, and um, we had to go and camp at the first um, lay-by we found, where some very nice people were camped there in the caravan, very, very, uh, very kindly. They got up and um, uh, made us some coffee and gave us something to eat, and even helped us with some breakfast in the morning so we could get away at first light. But we finally brought it back here, and uh, that was over three years ago. Kevin has spent well over 4,000 hours uh, restoring this. It's been totally dismantled. The, um, uh, the um, uh, steel, tubular steel airframe has been x-rayed. There are no cracks anywhere. It's been totally rebuilt. It is actually better than new now, and um, it flew I think that was about May or something like that for the first time, and uh, now they set out about a fortnight ago to fly over to um, at the east. They've been to the um, Avalon Air Show, and uh, <coughs> I had a, uh, a very excited call from Kevin um, on the blower, in which he, he well, I, I felt fairly confident that he'd get a a trophy of some description because it's a very spectacular aeroplane as far as we know uh, so far there's only one other in the world of that particular model. Um, uh, he ended up, um, uh, he was awarded Grand Champion. Mm -hmm. So naturally enough I'm very proud of that. Um, He's flown over now to uh, Tasmania because uh, his wife Vicky is with him and also uh, my granddaughter Sarah and uh, uh, Vicky's mother lives in Hobart and that's where they are at the moment. Uh, they'll be flying uh, across the pond again and up through Victoria and New South Wales before returning home about the end of April. Mm -hmm. So um, I thought that might be of interest to you. Was the aircraft ever in the air? Like yes it was, right through the war years it was used, it was, uh, used for communications. I worked on it. Did you indeed? I'd Lovely. Look it up and they've had a course land and a Alright, that's good. Another connection. Yep. Just a bit of history on that aeroplane. When Don O'Sullivan bought that plane it was in the early 70s, I can't remember exactly where yep. it was. But apparently uh, his pilot, Ron Tuck, flew that same aeroplane from Tasmania to Perth. And as he was coming over the Darling Range to land, he, he noticed the leading edges of the wings were starting to tear off. Oh. So he just made it on the ground here and he said, I'm not going to fly that till it's got new wing covers. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what happened. So he was very lucky. Yes, indeed. Well, that's what we were afraid of. <laughs> that's why we didn't fly it. And then uh, after it was all recovered and, uh, and at the Royal Aero Club here, I can remember it was a glossy white aeroplane and we had some I'll call him a dickhead member of the Arrow Club, he had a tiger moth, he went in and he decided to paint his tiger moth red, so you can imagine what that looked like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, the restoration has been, um, Kevin has managed to get the original uh, Uniform X-ray Lima registration, which is what it was when it first came here in 1936. Um, in, in between years it was uh, CWM as, oh you can't see it, yes you can, it's on the tail there. But um, it's, it's uh, got the mobile oil uh, stuff all over it again, the same colour scheme, the same colour. Um, I think the oil company's helping a little um, because of the advertising, and he's flying it to air shows anyway. Um, that's about all I can tell you about it. Thank you very much, Brian.